Whenever we decide to make a build, there is one thing that we cannot escape. We have to make sacrifices. Builds are normally limited to a certain rune level depending on what you want to do in the game. I like to play at rune level 150 for PvE, but tend to settle at rune level 125 whenever I feel like going into the Colosseum. There are some very cool rune level 80 invasion builds that manage to become very fun. But again, regardless of how you want to play, if you're making a build, then we have to make sacrifices. If we put points into one stat, then we cannot put them into another. And so, the art of min-maxing is born. We need to figure out the least amount of points that we need to put into a single stat in order to get the maximum benefit from it. The biggest tool that we have to reach this objective is the understanding of how soft caps work in the game. I have provided some general information about soft caps in other videos. Each stat has its own video and I provide some surface level information on the soft caps that each stat follows. That being said, the time has come to go into further detail. In this video, we're going to analyze and determine the absolute exact level that you need to go to in order to obtain the maximum benefit for your stat investment. We are going to be focusing on all five damage related stats in the game. Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Faith and Arcane. But that's not all. We are also going to be focusing on each individual case that the game provides in regards to damage. This means that we are going to determine the exact soft caps for each infusion in the game, but also for all spellcasting catalysts. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about status effects. We will also determine the perfect level for maximum status effect application. My dear viewer, this is a lot of content and there will be a lot of raw data that we will be reviewing. For this reason, I have provided timestamps in the description of the video in order to help you navigate all of the content. There will be a timestamp for each case so you can skip to the heavy infusion if that's what you're interested in or you can move straight to the spellcasting soft caps if you're a bit more of a mage. But that's not all. There is also a timestamp that will take you straight to the end of the video where I summarize each and every soft cap and provide a few tips and conclusions to improve your build. So, if you are not interested in the evidence and just want the soft caps, do not hesitate to skip straight to the end. With all of this said, if you are the kind of viewer that wants to see the proof and are interested in why these soft caps are what they are, then get yourself a drink and let's get started. The first three cases that we will be reviewing are Default Physical Damage, the Poison Infusion, and the Blood Infusion. These three cases share the same soft caps, so it is convenient to review them together. The first thing to do is identify each of these cases. Default Physical Damage is, as the name implies, a weapon's physical damage without any infusions. This applies to mundane weapons that have no infusion, but it also applies to unique weapons that cannot be infused. For example, the Staff of the Avatar is a unique weapon with physical holy split damage. Well, the physical part of this weapon's AR follows these soft caps. Another example is Bloodhound's Fang. It is pure physical damage, but since it cannot be infused, it follows these soft caps. The other two cases are pretty self-explanatory. These soft caps will be applied to all mundane weapons that are infused down the poison and blood paths. The physical damage of these two infusions will follow these soft caps. In these three cases, the key stats are Strength, Dexterity, Faith and Arcane. Of course, depending on which weapon we are talking about. For example, the Earth Steel Dagger has faith scaling that is applied to the weapon's physical AR. As a result, in this case, the faith soft caps of this weapon are the ones you see here. Specifically, these three have soft caps at level 18, level 58, and level 80. Let's go over these by looking at the shape of the data in this chart. The first, level 18, is pretty evident. When we go from level 18 to level 19, you can see a significant drop in returns. It is not massive, but like I said, it is significant. Returns are much lower after level 18. They are still worthwhile, but the drop in efficiency is drastic enough that we can call this level the first soft cap. 
I believe that it is clear enough to see. Now, let's jump straight to the final cap at level 80. This one is also very clear to see. When we go from level 80 to level 81, we can observe a very drastic drop in returns. Not only is the drop considerable, but the returns per level is also catastrophic after level 80. These very low returns continue on until the stats hard cap, the maximum level. So not only is level 80 to be considered a soft cap, it is also to be considered the final soft cap. It is not worthwhile to level up past 80 in these cases. Finally, the complicated one. The second soft cap is level 58. This one may not be as easy to see due to the gradual drop in returns that exist throughout level 55 to level 60. That being said, please take a look at the red line. This line signifies what I like to call the final plateau. By this, I mean the maximum amount of returns that we can get during the final levels if we were to go up to the final soft cap, level 80. So, if we do not plan to go all the way to the end, to level 80, then the logical course of action would be to stop right before we hit this plateau, because we know that we will never get as much returns past this point. So, if we follow the line, we see that level 58 is the final level above the line. Everything after level 58 is either on the line or below it. The result is clear. If you are not going to make a full level 80 commitment in these cases, then level 58 is when you need to stop for maximum efficiency in your returns. For these reasons, in the cases of default physical damage, the poison infusion, and the blood infusion, the soft caps are level 18, level 58, and level 80. The next three cases that we will review are the heavy infusions the keen infusions and the occult infusions once again these three cases share the same soft caps so we will be going over them together so let's identify these cases it is after all pretty self-explanatory these soft caps will be applied to all mundane weapons that are infused down the heavy path the keen path and the occult path the key stats for these cases are strength dexterity, and arcane. The physical damage of these weapons will be affected by these soft caps. Specifically, the soft caps are level 20, level 56, and level 80. Let's focus on the shape of this chart in order to see them. All the way on the left, we have the first soft cap at level 20. Honestly, this one is as clear as day. If you take a look at the returns we get from when we go from level 20, to level 21, there is a massive drop. It looks to be about a 50% drop in returns. This is tremendous and it makes it a very clear soft cap. I don't think that there will be any arguments on this one. Now, shift all the way to the right and we have the third soft cap at level 80. This one is also clear to see. When we go from level 80 to level 81, we can observe a very drastic drop in returns. Not only is the drop considerable, but the returns per level is also catastrophic after level 80. These very low returns continue on until the stats hard cap, the maximum level. So, not only is level 80 to be considered a soft cap, it is also to be considered the final soft cap. It is not worthwhile to level up past 80 in these cases. And then we have the second soft cap. Much like we saw in the first few cases, this one is complicated too. It may not be easy to see due to the gradual drop in returns that exist throughout levels 55 to level 60. That being said, once again, please take a look at the red line. Again, this line signifies what I like to call the final plateau. By this, I mean the maximum amount of returns that we can get during the final levels if we were to go up to the final cap, level 80. So, if we do not plan to go all the way to the end, to level 80, then the logical course of action would be to stop right before we hit this plateau, because we know that we will never get as much returns past this point. So, if we follow the line, we see that level 56 is the final level that is above the line. It is by a very small amount, but it is still technically above it. 
everything after level 56 is either on the line or below it. The result is clear. If you're not going to make a full level 80 commitment in these cases, then level 56 is when you need to stop for maximum efficiency in your damage value returns. That being said, due to the minimal difference between the returns that we get from level 55 in comparison to the final plateau line, it is also not a bad idea to stop at level 55. It saves you one level, and sometimes that is really all you need. Still, to be correct, and technically speaking, the second soft cap sits at level 56. For all of these reasons, in the cases of heavy infusion, the keen infusion, and the occult infusion, the soft caps are established at level 20, level 56, and level 80. Now, let's go over the quality infusion. This particular case has soft caps that are not shared by any other circumstance, so it gets its own section. Identifying this case is very simple. These soft caps will be applied to all mundane weapons that are infused down the quality path. The key stat for this case are strength and dexterity. The physical damage of these weapons will be affected by these soft caps. Specifically, the soft caps are level 16, level 58, and level 80. As we usually do, let's take a look at the shape of this chart in order to understand why the soft caps are what they are. Starting with the first soft cap, it's at level 16. As usual with the first one, they are very clear. From level 16 to 17, there is an evident drop in returns that represent a much lower efficiency past that point. It is still very much worthwhile leveling up past 16, but nevertheless, this drop signals a very clear first soft cap. Focusing once again all the way to the right, we find that the third soft cap for quality infusions is at level 80. Again, there is a very clear drop in returns from level 80 to level 81, and as we have seen in the other cases, the returns per level maintain a very low figure. Like we mentioned before in the other cases, we can see here that level 80 represents the third and final soft cap for quality infused weapons. It is becoming a general rule that, no matter the case, it is not worthwhile to level a stat past 80 points. And finally, the elephant in the room, let's focus on the evidence at the center of the chart. Much like we saw in the first few cases, this soft cap can be a bit complicated. Once again, it may not be easy to see due to the gradual drop in returns that exists throughout level 55 to level 60. Like we have done before, keep your eye on the red line. Much like we have seen in the last two charts, this line signifies what I like to call the final plateau. By this, I mean the maximum amount of returns that we can get during the final levels if we were to choose to go up to the final soft cap of level 80. So, if we do not plan to go all the way to the end, to level 80, then of course the logic course of action would be to stop right before we hit this plateau, because we know or we are aware that we will never get as many returns past this point. So, if you follow the line, we see that level 58 is the final level that is above it. It is by a very, very small amount, but technically speaking, it is still above it. Everything after level 58 is either on the line or below it. The result is obvious. If you're not going to make a full level 80 commitment in these cases, then level 58 is when you need to stop for maximum efficiency in your returns. That being said, due to the minimal difference between the returns that level 58 gives in comparison to the final plateau line, it is not a bad idea to stop at level 57, much like we spoke before. It saves you one level, and that can be very valuable. Still, technically speaking, the second soft cap sits at level 58. For these reasons, in the cases of the quality infusion, the soft caps are level 16, level 58, and level 80. Up to this point, we have focused on physical damage, but in Elden Ring, there are many weapons that also deal elemental damage. Magic damage, fire damage, lightning damage, and holy damage are all types of elemental damage, and all four of these types share their own soft caps. 
it is important to understand that these soft caps for elemental damage apply to both unique weapons as well as mundane weapons infused down an elemental path. Remember that these infusions are fire, lightning, sacred, flame art, magic, and cold. As a result, the key stats for elemental damage are all five offensive stats, strength, dexterity, intelligence, faith, and arcane. All stats provide some sort of elemental damage to at least one weapon in the game. To give you an example, if you were to infuse a longsword with a magic ash of war, the magic damage scaling that it gets follows these soft caps. In the same way, if you were to use the unique weapon, Moonveil, the magic damage scaling that it has also follows these soft caps. Any and all elemental damage that we get from a weapon will follow these soft caps. Specifically, the soft caps are level 20, level 50, and level 80. Let's go over them with the chart. In these cases, the caps are all extremely obvious. Starting at the left, the first soft cap is level 20. You can see that there is a considerable drop in returns when we go from level 20 to level 21. It is still very much worthwhile to continue leveling up past level 20, but the loss of returns do make it a very clear first soft cap. These lower returns continue up to level 50. Once again, at this point in the chart, we can see a very clear drop in returns. We do not need a plateau line or nothing. It is evident. From level 50 to level 51, we lose a lot of return in elemental damage. In fact, we lose about 60% of the returns from level 50 to level 51 and beyond. It is a drastic drop, and it very clearly makes it the second soft cap in this case. And finally, we pay a visit to good old level 80. Once again, there is a drop in returns past this level, from 80 to 81, as we lose up to 50% of the little returns we had left. From level 81 and beyond, returns are minimal and it is not worth going any further. Level 80 is the third and final soft cap. Now, with that said, it is important to make the point that even from level 51 to level 80, returns are not really looking good. They are minimal and, in my opinion, not worth the investment. As such, if you're going to focus only on a weapon's elemental damage, then I fully recommend that you stop at level 50. In this case, going for a full level 80 commitment is not that interesting. Nevertheless, due to these reasons, in the cases of all weapon elemental damage, the soft caps are level 20, level 50, and level 80. At this time, we are going to finish talking about weapon damage, and we're going to move on to another kind of harm that they can inflict. Status effects. As you know, some weapons can apply status effects, such as Bleed, Frost, Sleep, or Madness, on enemies. And, as you should also know, if a weapon applies a status effect and it has arcane scaling, then this status effect application will also scale and increase based on the character's level of arcane. It is obvious, but to make everything clear, it is important to understand that arcane is the key stat in this case. The soft caps that you see here will affect the status effect application of all weapons that follow two conditions. They have some sort of status application and they have some sort of arcane scaling. Specifically, these soft caps are level 45 and level 60. Again, they can be seen in the chart. This is a very evident case. The first soft cap at 45 is very easy to see. From 45 to 46, we lose more than two thirds of the status application scaling. This drop in returns is massive and it represents a very obvious soft cap. After that, the returns maintain up to level 60 where we suffer yet another massive drop. In fact, it is about 80% drop in returns marking this level a very clear soft cap. After level 60, returns are completely negligible, so it is to say that level 60 is also the final soft cap for this situation. Now, 
I have to say that, overall, the returns that we get after level 45 are actually pretty bad all around. For this reason, if you are looking to focus on status effect application, I would not go beyond this level. I fully recommend level 45 for the most efficient status application through weapons. Due to these reasons, in the cases of all weapon status effect application, the soft caps are level 45 and level 60. Let's keep talking about status effect application, but in this case, let's talk about consumables. Some consumable items, particularly pots, apply status effects on enemies. A very clear example of this is sleep pots. Much like with weapons, this status effect application scales with arcane, making it the key stat in this situation. The soft caps that you see here will apply to the status effect application that our character can get from consumables. We already mentioned sleep pots, but poison pots are also a good example. Specifically, the soft caps in this case are level 30 and level 50. Let's go over the chart. I have to say, in this case, things are extremely obvious. There is no room for doubt when it comes to the status effect application of consumables. For the first soft cap at level 30, you can see the gigantic drop of returns we get from level 30 to level 31. We are looking at about a 75% drop in returns, very clearly marking it a soft cap. After that, we maintain our returns until level 50. Going from level 50 to 51, you will realize that we suffer yet another drop of the very little returns we had left probably another 60% lost. This leaves us with very little efficiency and that makes level 50 not only a soft cap but also the final soft cap. Anything past level 50 is completely useless and not worth investing at all. That being said, the returns we get from levels 31 to 50 are nothing to write home about either. In fact, if you're telling me that you only want to focus on the status effect application of consumables, I will tell you to keep Arcane at 30. There is really no point in going past this level. One last final note is that Freezing Pots and Rot Pots do not have scaling status effect application. So these soft caps do not affect these two consumables. All of these reasons come together and show us that in the cases of status effect application from consumable items, the soft caps are level 30 and level 50. Let's now shift our focus to spell casting. Our characters cast spells with catalysts. Sorceries use staff and incantations use seals. These catalysts get their power from our character stats too. So, as a result, they also have soft caps. In this case, we will be speaking about what I like to call standard catalysts, or you can also call them front-loaded catalysts. These are spellcasting tools that follow the basic rule of diminishing returns, meaning the more points we put into a stat, the less returns we get from that single point. The soft caps that you see here apply to all standard catalysts in the game, and as a result, this means that the key stats are intelligence, and faith. A few examples for standard catalysts are the glintstone staff for sorceries and the finger seal for incantations. As for the soft caps, you will find them at level 60 and level 80. Let's look at the chart. Standard catalysts receive their highest amount of power throughout the early levels. In fact, we can see that our returns per level are magnificent all the way up to level 60. When we go from level 60 to level 61, our returns drop significantly, losing about 40% of what we used to get. The considerable drop is very clear to see in the data, and it marks the first soft cap at level 60. After this, our returns do hold steady until reaching level 80. Here, we can see that going from level 80 to 81, we once again suffer a drop in returns. This time, the drop is not as pronounced, but it is still noticeable. This marks level 80 as the second soft cap. After this, returns hold until reaching the hard cap of 99, so we can safely say that level 80 is the final soft cap in this case. Now, 
If you are planning on making a spellcaster character and you're going to be using a standard catalyst, then going to level 60 is completely mandatory. Also, I personally believe that if you're going to be making a pure spellcaster, then making a full commitment all the way to level 80 is still very profitable. Nevertheless, as I have mentioned with all other cases, do not go over level 80. I think that those points are better spent elsewhere. Due to the reasons I have stated, in the case of standard spellcasting catalysts, the soft caps are clearly defined at level 60 and level 80. Continuing with spellcasting catalysts, we need to move on to another type that our characters can use to cast their spells. In this case, we will be speaking about hybrid catalysts. Hybrid catalysts are those that require two or more stats in order to be effective. This applies to both sorceries and incantations. Some examples of these kinds of catalysts are the Gelmir Glintstone Staff for sorceries and the Clawmark Seal for incantations. The soft caps that you see here will apply to all hybrid catalysts in the game and this means that all five main attributes strength, dexterity, intelligence, faith and arcane are key stats for hybrid catalysts. Specifically, the soft caps for this case are level 30 and level 45. Furthermore, these soft caps apply to each different stat separately. Let's go over this at the chart. I am sure that you noticed that hybrid catalysts have soft caps that are much more concentrated in the level space. The largest part of their scaling can be seen up until level 30. From level 30 to 31, we see the first drop in returns, losing over 50% efficiency. After that, the returns hold steady until we reach level 45. At that point, going from level 45 to 46 constitutes yet another drop in returns per level invested. At this point in the chart, there is a two-thirds drop in efficiency. Not only this, but from level 46 onward, the returns we get are absolutely horrid. These soft caps come into effect very early in the stat investment and it represents the duality of hybrid catalysts. Since they need multiple stats to be efficient, it is recommended that you hit the soft cap on each stat for optimal damage capabilities. Personally, I believe that it is optimal to hit level 45 on each of the stats to maximize hybrid spellcasting damage. For these reasons, in the cases of hybrid spellcasting catalysts, the soft caps are level 30 and level 45. In order to conclude our study of the scaling data of spellcasting catalysts, we need to go over backloaded catalysts. These are spellcasting tools that show constant increases in the returns until reaching a single but final soft cap. The more we level up, the more returns we get until we reach the point in which they plummet into nothingness. This applies to both sorceries and incantations, with the Staff of Loss being a good example of a backloaded staff and the Erdtree Seal being a good example of a backloaded seal. Taking this into consideration, it is easy to understand that the key stats in this case will be Intelligence and Faith. The soft caps that you see here apply to all backloaded catalysts and, specifically, there is only one, level 80. Let's take a look at the chart. As you can see, when we use a backloaded catalyst, the returns that we get from our investments increase the more we level up the corresponding stat. Our returns become larger at level 26 and they increase yet again at level 61. Every point that we put into a backloaded catalyst will give us optimal returns, that is, until we reach level 80. From level 80 to 81, our returns absolutely plummet. They simply stop existing, presenting a drop of about 80% of their maximum total value. This drop is so massive and so drastic that it makes it a complete waste to go beyond level 80. That being said, until we hit level 80, our returns are fantastic and probably the most efficient of any weapon type in the game. 
If you are using a backloaded catalyst, it is fully recommended that you make a complete commitment all the way up to level 80. This is not only your stopping point, it is your objective and it makes backloaded catalysts perfect for characters that want to go full spellcasters. There is only one soft cap and you should meet it. For this reason, backloaded catalysts present one single soft cap at level 80. My dear viewer, we have gone over each and every soft cap related to offensive based stats. Whether you reached this point by seeing the evidence or you navigated through the timestamps, the fact of the matter is that you are now seeing all of the information summarized in this chart. Here you will see every single soft cap for every single case. Furthermore, you will also see the key stats for each situation as well. Overall, with this information, you should be fully prepared to perfectly plan any character by establishing exactly what level you need to stop increasing each stat. If you're looking to make a perfectly min-maxed build, this is the offense-related information that will get you there. With all of this said, I do have a few conclusions to share with you. These tips, if you will, are some general guidelines that you can follow in order to increase the power of any build through the use of this knowledge. First and foremost, if you choose to make a pure build of any kind, it is important that you take the main stat all the way to 80. For example, a pure strength build should have 80 strength, and a pure mage should have 80 intelligence. If you're looking to make a specialist character that is really, really good at one thing, then it is recommended that you take your most important stat all the way to the final soft cap. The next tip is in regards to status effects. If you're looking to make a bleed build or a poison build or maybe even a sleep build, then keep arcane at 45. This is the most efficient level for status effect application as it provides the highest amount of benefit possible for our investment. Sure, you could try to go up to level 60, but the benefits that we get from those additional 15 levels are really not that impressive. It is better to use them somewhere else. Moving on, if you are looking to make a hybrid caster, then the obvious move would be to keep both of the required stats at 45. For example, if you're going to make a Dragon Priest that uses the Dragon Communion Seal, then get 45 Faith and 45 Arcane. On the other hand, if you're going to make a Death Mage, then keep 45 Faith and 45 Intelligence. The only reason why you should be going higher than this for a Hybrid Caster is if you need more levels to meet the requirement of a specific spell that you want to use. Otherwise, maintaining a 45-45 balance is the most efficient strategy possible. Now, let's say you want to focus on physical damage, but you don't want to make a specialized pure build. Honestly, going to the second soft cap for physical damage is perfectly fine. Stick to 56 or 58 depending on which infusion you're going for. Personally, I like to run 55 strength when I use heavy infused weapon. It's not quite the soft cap, but it is still very efficient returns for the investment that I make. Overall, sticking to the second soft cap for physical damage provides enough power for a build to work, and it also gives you plenty of additional levels to focus on the survivability of your build. The last conclusion that I draw from this data is to stay at the second soft cap for elemental damage. If you are going to build a character that focuses on elemental damage through weapons, I very much recommend that you stay at level 50. Going for the full level 80 commitment in this case is not very efficient. It would give you more damage, but the amount of damage we actually get is not large enough in order to justify an additional 30 point investment. Stick to 50 and use all of those extra points for additional support. Unless, of course, you are going full spellcaster. In that case, as we mentioned before, go for the 80. These are just a few examples of the strategies that we can solidify through the use of this information. It is perfect for all of those players like me who enjoy min-maxing their favorite builds. Furthermore, 
Once the information is digested and organized, it is not difficult to use. Regardless of what character you are trying to make, always keep in mind the soft caps for your key stats. It will save you levels and, as I like to say, levels saved are levels gained. And there you have it. Hopefully this guide has been useful to show you a very important aspect of build making. Soft caps are really difficult to determine, but once the information is digested, it is very easy to understand and very valuable to use. Granted, it is not truly necessary to go this deep into the build making process in order to have a decent character that you can have fun with. That being said, it is not really that difficult to make the effort and you will immediately see the difference in power. Min maxing is wonderful because you can get a lot of really fun ideas to actually be useful and efficient. This information might just get you to get one extra level and sometimes that's all you really need to turn your fun build into your best build. Thank you very much for your time and I hope that I get to see you on the next one.